In this video, we'll discuss git branches. First, open up Sigwin and go into your odd job repo and type git branch a, and that will give you a list of the current branches. Uh, right now, this is a list of all the branches that we have. Um, and if you don't see that, you might do something like a git pull. And if you have your SSH agent set up, it will just automatically tell you that your current branch is up to date. And so this right here where it says remote slash origin slash something means that your local clone of the git repo knows that there's some other git repo which it refers to as origin that has a branch called f0 f-020213 if you want to have your own version of that um, branch and you want to set it up so that when you make changes to your local version of that branch then when you do a git push the remote version of that branch will get updated with the changes you made to your local version and the other way around if somebody makes changes to that remote version of that branch um, then you the next time you do a git pull you want those changes to be in your local version of that branch then that is called tracking that's where you make an update and you push it'll show up there they make an update and they push or you do a pull and it'll show up on your machine um, so to do that you do git checkout dash t which is short for tracking origin slash f dash zero two zero two one three and then hit enter and now if I type git branch dash a you'll notice that I have this new branch before I just had uh, master and now I have the local branches f zero two zero two one three and master and there's a star by this one which means I'm in that branch so if I make a commit right now then this branch will get updated so um, let's show an example of that I will um, make a change to uh, let's make a change to readme.txt Um, so Daniel Watson, I'll say that I am also known as DJ, which is true. Um, so now I will git add that file and then I will commit. Um, so git add adds a file to what will be in the next commit. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can change what will be in the next commit, but we'll go over that in a different video. So now I'll commit and I'll make the message add Daniel Watson's nickname. How do you spell nickname? I'll spell it like that. So I've committed it to my local version of the f-020213 branch. So if I do git status, it'll say that I have a commit, one commit in my local version of that thing that is not in the remote version of that thing. Uh, sorry, I have a commit in my branch that is not in the remote branch. Um, and it could be the case that I have a commit in my branch that's not in theirs, and they have a commit in their branch that's not in mine. And if so, uh, it would tell me that too. But right now, nobody else is working on that branch, so it doesn't say that. And so I made a commit, and that just modifies my local version. If I want to make that commit available to other people, I'll do a git push. 
And since I set up my um, branch as tracking, it knows, uh, Git knows that when I push, I'm pushing, when I push from the branch F whatever, um, that I'm pushing from mine to origins of the same name. All of this stuff is configurable, but all of the defaults are set up um, so that usually they'll use the same name. So I could have a completely different name pushing to a remote. So I could have FQ pushing to remote F020213. And I don't even have to have the F, actually. I could have whatever. Um, let's see. So now if I do a git status, it says nothing to commit, working directory clean, and it doesn't say anything about my branch being ahead of origin like it did up there. And that is how you check out a branch, um, make a commit to it, and push that branch back to the place where everybody can see it.